so we're on top of the ridge and um, the Germans were over there on that side and uh, that side of the ridge and over up this side right here somewhere around here was where uh, Vonnegut got captured probably in uh, if not the woods there the, the woods there then <laughs> the woods right over there somewhere in the woods on that side um, Vonnegut was in the 423rd and this is roughly pretty much where they had to surrender and it's just interesting because you can see how wooded it is you can see how thick the forest is and you can see how steep it is as well so they got pinned down here and actually they've cleared off this hill and you can see just the terrain how steep it is as well and if you were pinned down there wouldn't be much you could do you just have to surrender We were stockpiled as college graduates, or college kids, undergraduates were stockpiled in a thing called ASTP. I was sent to the University of Tennessee and to Carnegie Mellon. And they, they did, they, I, I wonder how long they knew they were going to use this for a rifle. But it was, uh, <laughs> anyway, we were simply stockpiled. And then I was pulled out and sent to this, the 106th Division, which had been on maneuvers in South Carolina, and after maneuvers, as all their privates and PFCs uh, were sent to, rep sent to replacement depots, but the power structure was completely intact as all the officers and all the non-coms, including the mail orderly. And so we all arrived in a division uh, where there was no hope for promotion whatsoever. And uh, you say we were given uh, infantry training. I wasn't. If I really have a lawsuit against the government because <laughs> my basic training was on the 240 millimeter howitzer. The only weapon uh, I had been trained, the Army trained me to use, 45 and, and the carbine. And so then I was sent to the 106th Division with no infantry training and made a battalion scout. Uh, <laughs> And fortunately, my father was a gun nut, so I had a pretty good idea of how all this crap worked. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I, I was utterly untrained, and it didn't, really didn't make any, any uh, difference. It was the 106th Division. There were not only the college kids, but people who'd been let out of jail, uh, given out given the opportunity to make that country proud of them instead of ashamed. And uh, there were very sickly people, uh, very poor physical specimens, as the model for Billy Pilgrim in my, my great novel, <laughs> Slaughterhouse-Five. Uh, <laughs> oh, how come you don't know? I just moved up. Let, Let me see your door text. Text. Let's see it. Where are they? I can't find him. He's a crowd. You don't look like I'm him. not. I'm an American. Prove it. Take us across the Atlantic with you and land us and, 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 and walk us up to December right. 16th of 44. The, hundred, the Hungry and Sick Division, also known as the Bag Lunch Division, uh, <laughs> went on the Queen Elizabeth uh, without escort uh, across the Atlantic Ocean because it was the fastest thing on the ocean and it could outrun the escorts. Yeah, we, we, we put in at England first, spent about two weeks there, uh, then went over to France, spent about two weeks there, then went into the line. Going up to the front in blacked out trucks with our steel helmets on and with our M1s like this, with a band of stud and so forth in the dark and we all knew each other. And we were going right to the front. Jesus, it felt wonderful. wonderful yeah. Holy smokes. It's, uh, if only my wedding night had been like that. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell 
Oh, we caught? Belgium's stupid. Oh, don't fuck around. You tell Paul Lazaro where we are. We're in the middle of crouch, you wop asshole. Well, you got us here. Get us out. Oh, good work, man. That'll be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily. On those trees. On the other side is a farmhouse. Listen, you guys go on without me. I'll be all right, honest. I'm gonna scout that farmhouse, you hear? And if it's clear, I'll fire my car being three times spaced. You got it? Got it. That son of a bitch ditches us, I'll kill him. We could surrender. What? We could surrender, couldn't we? We just have to stay here and we can hey, Listen to me. Me and the corporal and the Dago, we're Americans. We don't surrender. You got that? He's took off. Yeah, all right. So you're on you're on the Siegfried line in our in the yeah. Ardennes. And yeah. they told you it's very quiet here, nothing That's to worry right. about. That's right. We talked to second division guys as they were leaving. And what they'd had uh, one casualty at a jeep accident, I guess, the previous week, something like that. And uh, I was in battalion headquarters, as I was not only battalion scout, but the bodyguard for our uh, commander. Uh, and we didn't know really how bad it was or what it was like to be on the front. And things got bad very fast. Now, they went around this, because I didn't see the spearhead of the attack. And uh, finally, we were flying blind. Is, is as battalion scout, one of the jobs we were given with a six battalion scouts in a, in a battalion headquarters. I was sent to find out what we, we were sent to find out what the hell had happened to the artillery. <laughs> what the hell had happened to anything? A number of our vehicles, just in the confusion, we were trying to regroup to find out what the hell was going on. We had a lot of, of vehicles all in one place. And then the order was given, all right, well, let's pull out. And the 88s were waiting for them. And the, the truck would go out on the road and pow, and pow, and pow. And, and uh, we lost our trucks. And, and uh, whoever was in charge, decided this was a bad idea, finally, and uh, so, so we set about uh, sabotaging the, the vehicles. And finally, we were looking for just anybody, and uh, we did get fired on, and finally the order came down uh, where we were, that we were to surrender, which I guess was the largest surrender of Americans under arms in American military history, as our regimental commander ordered us to surrender. Well, this is an illegal order. It's like ordering a soldier to shoot himself, that you cannot do that. And so we did not wish to. And uh, uh, s several of us set out to find out where the hell we were. Where, and uh, uh, we wandered around as we'd be fired on ever so often. Uh, the Germans were mopping up, and the real front line must have been, I don't know, 20, 30 miles away. Behind you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, behind you? Beyond us. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, the Germans had a mopping up operation. Uh, these parties out hunting for pockets of Americans here and there. And we finally wound up in a creek bed, which was sort of a natural trench. And uh, with loudspeaker, they said they knew where we were. Was, How many of you? Oh, 10, 12. Uh, at that time, all I... All headquarters personnel or mixed? No, we had a doctor, we had a couple of anti-tank guys. It was just, whoever wanted to take off, let's go. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the loudspeaker, they said uh, they knew where we were. In good English, was this? Uh, good enough for us. I, I... <laughs> and uh, come out. And... Uh, bring your weapons with you. So we didn't. And so they just fired tree bursts in as we were, and uh, some of us were hit, not me, thank God. Uh, anyway, uh, we finally decided a pretty good idea, and we took our rifles apart and threw the parts all over the place. You fucking faggot! What's the matter? You fucking married! Ooh, oh, yeah! Oh, cut it out! Oh, the cut it out! What's the matter, faggot? 
think he was a girl. He said he wanted to kiss me. Let's kill him! Come on, give me the knife! Imaginary things that I... Give me the knife! Come on, will you? Kill him! Finish where I was. So you were in that ditch, right? the, the act of surrender. How did, they, they're calling, you guys don't come, they fire the tree burst, you yeah, finally decided it's hopeless, you break up your weapons, and then what, you came out like this, yeah. or with a white flag, or, I mean, that's always a critical no. moment. How do you safely get taken POW? Yeah, well, I think they were glad to have no trouble. And uh, yeah, that was it, and that was their job, uh, to round us up. They were young guys who were after us with much better weapons than we had, incidentally, is when we got beat, is the Germans were much better equipped. And they were, what, the Germans had white capes, they had, had whitewashed their tanks and their vehicles. Everything we had was the color of dog shit. We were fighting in the <laughs> snow. They took us down the shoulder of the road. Uh, what, it, it must have been, it was two of our regiments, maybe 10,000 people, something like that. It was a big surprise to them, too. Uh, going the other way, well, boy, these young, tough-looking troops riding on tanks and so forth, they, they really had, they were really good-looking soldiers. And I guess they practically all got killed, didn't they, or captured? Yeah, Because yeah. they just, uh, yeah. they, their flanks were completely undefended. But it was a wonderful invent, uh, adventure, and I really wouldn't have missed it for anything. When, when did your feeling change? When you were, when you were taken prisoner, yeah. were you still feeling high? And, and oh, no, 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 I, no, I, no that, that, that high lasted, it was like crack. How long did that high last? <laughs> about, about three hours. <laughs>